part two of the series about how I made that classical uh, bipolar audio amplifier in the, uh, with uh, energy in the order of 15 up to perhaps 30 watts. In the order of 3 times 0 0.7 volt or 0 0.8 volt. Will that work? I don't know. In general, it's a good first solution. Just like, say, using here these power uh, resistors of 3 ohm, 3.3 ohms to limit the current through the end transistors. So, this is, say, the, the, the power part of the audio amplifier. And now we go to the preamp part. And that is, like I told earlier, this op amp part. So, this, I skip this. This is not okay. You can use it when you want, when you have. Important to know this here, this part, the, the, the op amp part is also not okay. I will talk about that further in the video. Still, uh, germanium transistors in your stock, say the AD161 and the AD162. Uh, I have, like I told, used completely other transistors. But this part is now uh, in the focus how to get that working. And it's interesting that they have used here a 270 kilo. I skip it because it uh, oh, didn't sister. work. From the output of the power part, say that's in this case this wire, to pin two of the op amp. Well, how will that work? Uh, well, I cannot skip it. Don't know why. Let me try it with... Uh, drama. About the development of that, say, 15, 20 watt audio amplifier with a 741 Op amp, the old schematic of the 1970s. Anyway, uh, now the diodes are here mounted. I will skip uh, also this. This was already showed. So I really don't know how to get to the because a, <coughs> a 741 chip cannot work directly, and, and then I mean properly on say 30 volts or so perhaps it can work in that way but anyway um, this is this will be the amp amplifier this will be the pre amplifier and of course we need a voltage divider to give this chip the 741 audio chip a, a certain voltage where it will work in its best well, uh, I have to say, uh, I used that voltage divider first here. It is, you can see it here. This one and that one, uh, 12K, 12,000 ohms and uh, 3K3. But uh, finally I soldered the wire parallel to it. So it doesn't work as a voltage divider in the final circuit. Anyway, way. And in my opinion, that is approximately 9 volts up to 18 volts. And uh, I want to drive this end amplifier with 30 volts, perhaps 40 volts. We need a voltage deep. So I skip this because uh, I change it later. Next video. About the development of this, say, 10 watt, 15 watts, perhaps 30 watt audio amplifier. We are now in a more or less decisive stage. The 741 op amp is connected. Um, here is the schematic, by the way, and this is completely changed. 
I've used normal NPN, NPN and PMP transistors that can handle a lot of energy, etc. etc. Um, when you study and see such a circuit here, you can see that the 741 at pin 6 drives the end transistors. And this is not okay in a certain way, uh, like I told in the earlier videos. They used in that old 1973 schematic uh, germanium transistors, they perhaps they could be connected together the base the basis of the uh, germanium transistors because they uh, have an other say a barrier voltage it's in the order of 0.3 volts but silicon transistors have an other barrier voltage etc etc so uh, what i want to tell is this this is now the preamp here is the so it, this 741 has to drive these two transistors here. And that is, uh, say, not an easy job for that uh, chip. But anyway, uh, like I told, it's easier in this case with germanium transistors. I skip it now uh, because uh, otherwise I cannot get to 15 minutes in my second video in the next video and very important when you make uh, experimental audio amplifiers like I do here never and I really mean never connect say the DC power supply directly say a uh, boom to the to the, to the amplifier that's absolutely the baddest option that you can take um, here is my power supply it's now on zero volts and I will add now for the first time voltage to my amplifier and there's always say a kind of good thing when you touch the input of an audio amplifier with your finger you must hear hum. Anyway I've connected my loudspeaker box here and by purpose with a very long wire and the reason is that when you make an audio amplifier and amplifier it could be that it starts to oscillate on long loudspeaker wires and in that case uh, we have to take some measures, uh, say correcting circuits. Well, let's see. It's completely new for me. I don't know what will happen. Perhaps nothing will happen. Uh, perhaps the audio amplifier doesn't take current. It seems to me that it doesn't take current. 10 volt, 16 volts, 20 volts. I hear faint hum. That's a first good sign that, uh, that the ID. I stopped the video now because uh, that faint hum uh, uh, was giving only a very slight indication of proper working anyway. So, what were the first results of this uh, act? In fact, it didn't work with that schematic, that schematic of 1973. And then I mean, especially the 741 pre op amp that had to drive. Experimental audio amplifier. Uh, I have used a 10K resistor here to drive both transistors out. But then I had to shortcut it to get more energy into the base connection of the uh, two end transistors. Anyway, finally I used a 1K resistor to drive both end transistors out. A very strange phenomenon, it did not want to work with my CD player. But it worked with the um, sine wave generator. 
Let's try and see. That's of course an enormous distortion, but uh, it can it does not have to mean that the circuit is bad. And the reason is, I skipped this also, I only have five, five minutes, and the reason was that the uh, 741 op amp uh, that I connected uh, via the 1973 schematic was not okay. The, the op amp was okay, but the schematic was not okay. Anyway, next video. Because I wanted to go all the way with you about developing this audio amplifier, uh, my conclusion, first conclusion, is that there are very strange things happening. When I touch the input of the SEF41, it works. But when I connect my CD player here, it doesn't work. But when I connect my CD player output directly to the two end transistors, it works. It will be for one second or so because it's copyrighted music. Anyway, let me demo it. So that's Nina Simone, and you could hear that the sound is okay. Uh, not completely okay. Uh, that is, say, another mm. uh, page of this book. So, what is happening here? Could be that that 741 is not properly connected, and even not properly connected here. So, that's the final conclusion. It was not properly connected in that 1973 circuit. Of course, it could work in those days with germanium transistors with 12 volt, but anyway, now it didn't work. I had to make a, a new uh, 741 uh, setup. That 741 circuit was not very succeeding though I have already showed that the end transistors work nice. Let me show it again. It's copyright it's copyrighted music and I only can give it for one second or so. Anyway, yeah. Nina Simon You don't know what it's like. Anyway um so um, final well this is so not, not the final the circuit of success uh, oh, well. by using an old schematic that I used much earlier in another video on YouTube therefore uh, 741 chip was okay I had not expected that by the way uh, I thought it was broke but anyway it works and I will give one second piece of music Nina Simone so it works uh, that's all that I can tell at the moment tomorrow more things to tell say finally working it all out uh, give the best schematic etc etc